Hello, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for the year 2018. So, uh, hope you had a, a good happy holidays to everyone. So, you hope you enjoyed your uh, Christmas and obviously the festive New Year break. And now we're back to normal. So, 2017, I ended up with around 800, 800 plus points of the year, which is very poor. Uh, I need to really work hard this year and get back to that 3,000, 4,000 points a, a year haul uh, as per normal. Uh, previous years have been almost 5,000. So hard work this year. I need to get back on the uh, on the grind. Okay, so in terms of um, uh, European market analysis, this is the first video for the year. So let's look into the actual markets, given the fact that obviously we had light volume float higher and European markets certainly uh, opened up slightly weak, well, slightly very weaker, given the fact that Euro is above 1.20 and we've got talk on Mr. Draghi now. Or talk of uh, a potential end of QE. So let's see exactly what's going on there, folks. Okay, so let's uh, let's delve right into it and let's uh, let's discuss the markets and let's see where the technical setups place us at present. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal Signals and Market Updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app on the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, let's start off with the Asian markets first and foremost. We have the Asian markets overnight. China certainly stronger, uh, although Nikkei weaker. Okay. So that certainly is a status quo there. In terms of fundamentals, um, the idiot, as we all know, the uh, professional moron, um, he's perfected that art, the uh, uh, twit, okay, known as uh, the uh, king of Twitter, the twit, uh, who's the king of Twitter at present at the moment, certainly seems to be uh, obviously tweeting vitriol and filth on a daily basis. But we all have to bear with it until, obviously, he is uh, replaced, hopefully. There's a regime change in America, and he gets replaced by somebody who's more sane, uh, okay, who has a bit of common sense as well, talking about a potential uh, uh, nuclear button, okay. So talking about North Korea and the nuclear button. Again, there was a funny tweet this morning uh, saying there is a Diet Coke button, though. Um, so apparently there is no actual nuclear button, but there is a Diet Coke button, given the, fact, the amount of Diet Coke he drinks. That probably explains why he's so orange. Either way, he's, uh, he's a bit of a mutant, uh, X-Men uh, style at the uh, White House. Anyway, uh, enough with the jokes and uh, the uh, the little dig there uh, at the, uh, the the professional imbecile uh, known as Mr. Trump. Okay, so again, um, North Korean situation, Iran concerns as well have been lingering given the protests there. Again, cause for concern. Uh, although there have been potential um, uh, uh, channels of communication open between North and South which again is going to exert pressure on the uh, the price of oil, which in turn will hurt commodities. Uh, also with regards to the dollar index, certainly coming into support now, the weaker dollar has certainly inflated asset prices such as gold and oil going into the uh, end of the year, which in turn obviously helped the FTSE and the S&P higher as well. We did get a massive surge in the S&P yesterday, which was quite impressive, okay, dip buying, etc., etc. But no, volume certainly coming back to some sort of uh, a normal rate and we'll be able to understand and interpret price action much better, okay, so going forward. So that's certainly something to uh, consider. Okay, so that's basically where we stand in terms of fundamentals for the day. Let's just quickly go through the economic calendar. Uh, this morning, we've had uh, German core inflation uh, coming in at 0.6%, so stronger than expected, which in turn should keep the euro afloat. Okay, in terms of euro unemployment, German unemployment numbers certainly coming in stronger than expected, so that certainly should keep the uh, German economy strong. UK construction numbers came in weaker than expected, which again we should exert weak, weak, weakness on the UK pound. In terms of Brexit, concerns still remain, given the fact that yesterday we had a report that we have another imbecile here in the UK. Unfortunately, it's the year of the imbeciles. Um, known as Ms. Uh, confused, uh, has no idea, uh, baffled, dazed, um, and totally incompetent Ms. Theresa May, okay, as a leader. So we have two imbeciles, one across the pond and one obviously at home, unfortunately. Okay, they have no idea what they're doing. They're just sort of, just basically, just, uh, what should we say, it's... Um, it's just thinking on the job, really, and uh, there is no real plan uh, uh, from that perspective or organisation. Uh, and given the fact that um, uh, total chaos, total uh, uncertainty, there was a report out yesterday from one of their own Tory experts saying that she's going to lose more than 50% of the seats in, in, in London. So, again, uh, calls for her to uh, depart, which should create political uncertainty, which in turn, obviously, is a risk aversion. OK, so bear all that in mind. Okay, now let's look at the technical, technical picture, given the fact that the major story at the start of the year has been a stronger euro, euro above 1.20, which in turn has caused a lot of chaos in terms of uh, European exports. As you can see here, we retest that pivot high at 1.1270. 
12070. So again, euro strength hurting uh, European exports, which in turn hurts European equities. Talk of the end of QE from Mr. Draghi as well, which in turn obviously has caused chaos and caused pain for European equities, hence the reason why we've seen weakness there. Bringing up the dollar index or even the bun bonds as well, bear in mind the bonds certainly held a potential support on the bonds with bounce. We are now coming into resistance, and therefore expect equities to come into resistance as well. Uh, in terms of the dollar index, have I got the dollar index here? I don't think I have. Uh, no, I don't have the dollar index here, so I'll leave that for now. Yes, sorry, I have. Okay, dollar index certainly coming here, but bouncing off support. Okay, um, certainly causing uh, a weakness in um, euro pairs, uh, which in turn, as you can see here, we are now coming into resistance on the dollar index. So bear that in mind on ten minute chart. Let's just go to a sixty minute chart. Okay, uh, let's just go to a four hour chart. I'll give you more of an insight here. I'll even go to a daily chart. Okay, let's move to a daily chart, see exactly where we are. So certainly a bouncing from here. Again, you can see this decline here, okay, going in towards the end of the year, which in turn has helped the FTSE, helped the S&P 500 as well. Okay, so the dollar index certainly looking to potentially bounce here now. Uh, let's see if we are going to see weakness in your uh, equities too. Okay, so that's the status quo at present, okay, in terms of the uh, fundamentals. Uh, in terms of technicals now, let's look at the... Uh, the actual German DAX itself, the German DAX just certainly putting a bottoming tail yesterday, certainly exerting uh, weakness there, or certainly showing weakness there as well. Okay, so again, you're just about holding support here. You had cap fill, <coughs> excuse me, cap fill down towards the uh, 12700 region. German DAX certainly under immense pressure, given the fact that obviously you've got German coalition uncertainty, you've now got a potential QE uncertainty, so it certainly isn't a, uh, a good uh ingredient or certainly not good, good ingredients for uh, for a uh, a bullish pie shall we say okay so again it's cause for concern watch out for that potential bottoming tail though let's see if we can hold that if you fail to hold that then you are have you do have these gaps here you've got 12 700 which we haven't closed yet you've got 12 657 then a gap at 12 600 potential test at 200 ma as well uh, bearing in mind the daily chart on the german dax you've held that right shoulder so just bear that in mind Okay, so right shoulder of this H&S formation. It's not a perfect H&S, but either way, you've got a left shoulder here, here, then obviously right shoulder certainly coming into place at present. So the whole concept is, is you've got the right shoulder, okay, lower high. Okay, that's the status quo. And the daily chart of the German DAX, and German DAX is the uh, key driver in Europe. So again, whichever way the DAX will go, that's the way the European markets will go. Uh, you can see here diagonal trend line certainly came into support at 12.750. So technically it's sound, okay, from that perspective. Uh, again, any bounce will be seen. Uh, so any bounce, you'll face resistance at 13.0110. Uh, okay, and then obviously you have resistance at these levels as well. You've got um, previous support equals resistance on the 13.150. So, so watch out there as well. So an impressive bounce thus far. Okay, almost a 200 pip bounce. Uh, okay, let's see if we can uh, bounce even further. And if we do, you are seeing resistance at 13,000. Okay, so that's the German DAX story for you. 10-minute chart. Let's just quickly go into that and give you an insight there as well. Bear with me. Okay, so moving on to the 10-minute chart for the German DAX here. You can see that we've not closed the gap thus far. Okay, but if the euros remains above and stays afloat, then that gap certainly will be looking to be closed very, very quickly. So... So watch out there in terms of the German DAX. Certainly has been uh, quite uh, an impressive sell-off on the German DAX thus far. Having said that, you've got stronger German uh, employment data as well today. So watch out there. Although stronger inflation numbers came in as well. So if you are trading the DAX, be nimble. Okay, that's all I can say for now. Uh, again, I'm not a big trader of the DAX. I prefer to use the DAX to project the next movements on the French CAC and obviously on the um, European uh, Euro euro stocks as well so again strong employment data does obviously support a bullish argument there from the german dax so just bear that in mind as well again you've got gap filled below if the euro continues to strengthen one could argue that stronger inflation and stronger employment data will cause the euro to strengthen which in turn obviously will cause the uh, the german dax to fall as well one could argue that or alternatively you could argue stronger employment against the weaker or stronger inflation argument and therefore you are looking for a uh, potential uh, move uh, higher in the german dax as well so again arguments can be made from a fundamental perspective on both sides so again just be nimble okay that's all i can say follow your technicals you've got resistance there at uh, 12950 if you break that then you are looking to go higher possibly test that 13,000 level on the uh, 60 minute chart which i was depicting before okay moving on in terms of the french cac let's see exactly where we are here uh looking at the daily chart first and foremost let's get a bird's eye view for 2018 okay 
Uh, again, uh, one of the reasons why I went long yesterday on the John the French on the uh, French CAC was given the fact he got 200 MA gap fill support as well, looking for a potential bounce. And that's exactly what we're getting at the moment. We did have a symmetrical wedge type scenario where we broke lower, obviously due to the fact that we had a stronger euro, which in turn obviously was, was certainly um, exacerbated by a weaker dollar. Okay, and uh, again, commodities failed to uh, stem that tide uh, in terms of selling. So the main concept here is that on the daily chart, you do have a low high. We held that FIB 61%. So any retrace now will be a shorting opportunity from my perspective, potentially looking down to five, gap fill at 5,100. This is long term, obviously, depends on your time frame. But that certainly is a, a picture, uh, certainly being uh, obviously um, uh, uh, painted there at present. Okay. In terms of the French CAC, again, any retracement now, you are looking at around the 5,330 for potential pause and that's probably a level that I may well be interested at shorting for now I'm not I'm going to sit the sidelines okay you've certainly bounced uh, given the fact that obviously horizontal support was here gap fill was here as well and you do have multiple gaps below so again watch out for your technical levels in terms of French CAC if we continue to thrust higher the next level of resistance at 5355 5330 and then ultimately at 5390 if this market really starts to rip okay bear in mind it has been a bull market for the most of 20 uh, 17 uh, and certainly don't forget okay just a few days of, uh, of weakness doesn't necessarily uh, dictate the actual direction again you are looking at resistance around the 5330 zone that's the level that i'll be looking to potentially exit on my potential swing longs in the french cac okay so that's basically where we are in terms of the FTSE 100 last but not least uh, this is a pattern that i'm certainly watching very carefully okay uh, on the 60 minute chart looking for a potential h and s top so again, I'll be happy to short around the 7350, 7360, stop loss above the, the Fib um, 75, and look for a potential flush on the downside and on the uh, FTSE 100. Okay, watch out there. 10 minute chart at the moment, you certainly are holding the uh, key support zone around that uh, 737640 zone. You've got resistance around the 7660 zone, and obviously you've got double top there uh, in terms of the next move in this market. So watch out there. In terms of where the uh, the, the, the FTSE 100 is going to go, you got 7700, and uh, we were actually above 7700 in the um, after hours. Okay, uh, given the uh, the actual um, New Year's break and the light volume there as well. Okay, so that's the status quo. Certainly, a lot of stop hunting going on above there, and then obviously we dropped almost 100 pips. Interesting. Either way, that's the status quo, folks. Again, 7650 another area, uh, 7660 again a zone that I'll be more than happy to short the FTSE with a stop loss above 7690. Okay, that's basically where we stand. The daily chart on the FTSE is still ha is a breakout, though. Bear that in mind. Whether that's a, a, a fake out certainly needs to be questioned from my perspective. Okay, uh, let's see if we can break this bullish channel, start to break lower. Ideally, we want to break 7,620, then the bears certainly come into play. Then you're looking at testing that breakout zone at 7,580. Let's see if we hold that. If we break that, then again, on my sell off. Okay, from my perspective. Uh, given the Brexit scenario and the, the concerns and the uncertainty regarding Theresa May and etc etc, it's very hard for me to uh, see how the FTSE 100 can certainly move higher. It certainly is going to be tough. Okay, breaking that 7700 zone from my perspective, I'll be more than happy to short the FTSE uh, going forward as well. Especially if commodities certainly start to weaken and the dollar starts to strengthen. Either way, that's my uh, analysis and in, uh, insight. Uh, again, you're more than welcome to have an opposite view. That's the market. Uh, uh, really, it's, it's, it's traders taking uh, either side. Okay, so again, just follow your risk management, money management rules, adhere to your technical and fundamental arguments, and I uh, wish you the best for 2018. Please be sure to visit cfds.com. Certainly take advantage of that bonus that's on offer, uh, as always. Okay, so again, certainly start to trade with them. So just drop me an email. If you do, you can email me at, uh, 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 at uh, inter-market-analysis. Sorry, day trader. Uh, let me just bring up the website actually what am i doing uh let's bring up the website okay you can always e email me uh if you have any questions more than happy to help as always okay um, now i also run the live analysis service as well where i share my uh, trades uh, and insight in real time okay uh again you can certainly gain access to that it's a one month free trial folks for those that are interested this is my website by the way okay uh inter hyphen market hyphen analysis.com uh, my email address is uh, here okay it's day trader at inter hyphen market hyphen analysis.com be sure to visit my website be sure to visit uh, email me any questions uh, if you do set up the trading account drop me an email okay uh, with regards to that and uh, be sure 
to uh, check out my other services that are on offer. We have the mentoring, or I have the mentoring program on a one-to-one -one basis that you may well be interested in. There's a free trial option there as well, and obviously there's a live analysis service too. So on that note, uh, I wish you uh, again uh, a happy new year and uh, take care. Goodbye now.